It's truly wonderful to be back here with all of you and not a moment too soon. So much has transpired in the last three years since we've all been together. The global pandemic, continued increasing inequality across the world, a renewed racial justice movement, new war and displacement, and the ever-present looming climate crisis, to name but just a few. Today is also the National Day of Awareness of Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women, Girls and Two-Spirit, and an issue you will hear more about in this upcoming session. In ways big and small, we have all experienced or witnessed great loss, suffering and disconnection. I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that and to send my thoughts to those who are still suffering today. What gives me hope in the face of all of this? In one word, you. And more eloquently said by one of our past speakers, Laila June, an indigenous poet and activist from the Diné Nation in her song, All Nations Rise, that she performed for us during SOLVA MIT 2019. We know that we are the ones we have been waiting for. We are the ones that grandma's been praying for. You are all here today, taking time out of your busy lives because you are committed to using technology and innovation in service of solving the world's most intractable challenges. In service of the most marginalized and underserved among us. And that is what SOLVE is all about. Our mission is to drive innovation to solve world challenges. We see ourselves as a marketplace for social impact innovation, and we bring together innovators, cross-sector leaders, academics, and more to find connections and broken partnerships to bring forth innovative solutions and help better the world. Today, for the first time in three years, this marketplace is back in action, live and in person. I'm very excited. <laughs> but even if we can always meet in person, the work didn't stop. And in fact, in many cases, it grew and accelerated during this pandemic. The Seoul community, like the MIT community, stepped up to meet the moment and some of the big challenges of our time. In March 2020, we notably launched a health security and pandemics challenge, which received hundreds of applications. And in 2020, we launched a domestic challenge, the anti-racist technology in the US challenge. We now have over 200 Solver teams and 10 Solved innovators headquartered in 49 countries. Our 28 indigenous fellows represent 18 American Indian tribes. And I'm so happy to say that we have our 2020 and 2021 Solver teams with us here today. So they are sitting right here in front. Um, they have traveled all the way from Brazil, Micronesia, Botswana, and more. So let's please give it all up for our incredible Solver teams and Indigenous <laughs> Fellows. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Thanks to our Solve members and sponsors, we have brokered over 500 partnerships and $50 million of grant and investment funding to our Solver teams and social entrepreneurs worldwide. You will hear soon about some of their work and the partnerships we have helped catalyze, but do check out our website and the Solver map for more information. I also wanted to take a moment to dearly thank our sponsors and partners who make all this work possible. General Motors, the Mortgage Family Foundation, HP, Vodafone America's Foundation, Binance Charity, Living Proof, and many more. Thank you. Um, and our work continues unabated in 2022. I'm excited to say that we just closed our 2022, 2022 challenges and received over 1,100 applications from 117 countries. Bravo to all the people who applied and you'll be hearing from us soon for the finalist selection. And I'm happy to say that thanks to our prize funders, we have now have over $2 million available in funding for the 2022 challenges. And it's not too late to join and add your prize to, uh, to this, but that's really exciting for us as well. While the challenges are now closed, there's still opportunity to join us if you want to be a reviewer or a mentor or join us for Solve Challenge Finals in New York City on, in September, where we will announce the new class of Solver Team and Indigenous Fellows. 
At Solve, we aim to answer, how do we help problem solvers, no matter where they are, advance their innovative solutions to the world's most pressing problems? In that spirit, we are starting Solver MIT with this opening plenary, and our theme is ethical and inclusive innovation, solving with, by, and for the most underserved. And to discuss this topic, we're taking you on a journey around the world, to Iran, to the refugee camps in Jordan, to Ukraine, to the Menomi nation, and then right back here in Cambridge. Through these conversations, we will get to meet some incredible people, they are not only thinking about the intersection of technology, innovation, and social impact, but they are also taking action and bringing forth their own solutions. Here's some of the incredible lineup you get to look forward to. But before we get started with this incredible journey, I wanted to give you an exclusive preview of a documentary project our friends at Red Glass Pictures have been working on, thanks to a gift from our sponsor, HP. For the last few months, they have been following three of our Solver teams and Indigenous Communities Fellows. Danielle Boyer from Every Kid Gets a Robot, Kimberly Seals Allers from Earth, and Kitty Liao from Spile. The documentary will come out in the fall, but we're pretty excited about it. So let's watch this preview now. Here in New York City, the black maternal mortality rate is up to 12 times that of white women. 12 times. The statistics are staggering. The disparity in care is costing black women their lives. Centuries of poverty and marginalization among indigenous people. When I saw how so many indigenous youth like me get left behind, I was like, this is not fair. For me, the answer was robots. There are 18.4 million children not getting ASIC vaccinations because of the challenges of the last mile transportation. I was shocked and then I thought, there must be a way to solve it. students robots who wouldn't have them otherwise. It's a lot. The goal is to create a reliable cooling device to deliver these life-saving vaccines to the people who need them. Even though I know this is the right thing to do, it's just bloody difficult. 